Now, I'm sure you've all had, had an earful <coughs> and a mouthful about global warming, about renewable energies. But what I'm going to de demonstrate today is two forms of new, new renewable energies that are very, very applicable to Mamamboga, back home in the village. The whole concept of networking power and networking resources to the village won't happen in my lifetime. So having everybody being independently power supplied, we know that this will be a viable option. This motorcycle is a demonstration of exactly that. We have an automotive alternator that is basically being driven directly off the engine. So the principle is that the wheel will drive the alternator and you will charge your battery. Now, border borders are common in Kenya. They are taxis. So everybody who goes home by taxi, they normally have a battery at home anyway. So the border border guy will just spend a little bit more time charging your battery before you serve him a cup of tea or something, and he goes home. So you don't need the solar panel. You don't need those expensive charge controllers. You don't need any of that stuff. You just need to be taken home by the border border guy. He's on telephone, so you can call him and tell him, my battery's down, and he can come and collect you. The second type of renewable energy that we're talking about is conservation-related because of the destruction of the trees. Now, back home, you can see the plight of the two different kind of families. The one with the biogas, basically, they light up their juco in the morning just by the strike of a match or the flicker of the switch. They've got their tea in done in five minutes. They've got their lunch done in another 10 minutes. They've got their dinner done in a very short time. There's none of that collecting firewood, all of those hassles associated with um, firewood and charcoal. On top of that, it's an absolutely clean energy, so there's no disease related to um, halation and what have you. The system I've developed is a very simple system where it's above the ground, so there's no construction at all. It's very, very simple to install. It's a bit like putting up a tent. It's that size in reality with a cow beside it. Because of its efficiency, you only need the dung from one cow to give you enough gas to actually give you gas for cooking and give you enough gas for, um, for electrification. The border border bike, when it comes to your house, by the way, you'll plug him into your biogas. He won't even use his petrol, and he'll run, he'll charge your batteries. So the system is a cross-flow, so you feed it from one end, it overflows from the other, and you can see the clear gas pipe on the top. That runs directly to your burners. So there's no secondary storage, there's no necessity for cylinders, no necessity for compressing gas. And again, the system can be um, scaled to any capacity. We have installed it in schools, in children's homes, in lodges and camps. Commercially, we're in um, big, big organizations like Farmer's Choice have put in um, a, a pilot to see how far it will go for them. And as we all know, there's poop everywhere. You can't go wrong. You can't not have the fuel to fuel the system. Now, one of the beauties with our system, because it's surface mounted and it's not underground, you don't actually need to use the poop. What we have is, if you understand the biology in the, in the biogas, the bacteria are just breaking down what you feed them. They break down the grass because the cow eats the grass. They break down uh, kitchen waste because you feed them the kitchen waste. So actually, you can feed them anything. You can feed them grass, you can feed them water hyacinth, you can feed them matenge, you can, you can feed them human waste, <clears throat> as you've seen earlier on. You can feed them anything. So in essence, you don't actually need the cow. You just need the synthetic stomach, which is we're referring to as a biodigester. So you've got the clean gas, you've got engines running, as I've explained before. You've got electricity. Now, we're on the equator. We're blessed with rain, like it is upstairs, um, and f f perfectly fertile soils. But we don't have anywhere to store our food once we start harvesting it. With biogas and very simple drying machines, you can dry the food. You can dry it daytime, nighttime. You can dry it while it's raining. You can dry it 24-7. You can do three or four shifts with one of these simple drying machines. All you need to do is load more, more dung into, more shit into your system, and you get more gas. Here we have a small, I call it a bio-DC generator. And what it is, it's a micro-engine running another alternate similar to this, which means that in terms of job creation, for instance, the border border person will have the bike and the dynamo, and another engineer can have, or another entrepreneur can have the, the little engine you can see up there. And so the owner of the digester doesn't need to have the machinery. All he needs to have is the gas. And then you just call up the guy with the machine and say, you know, get over here, buddy, and charge up my system. And you know, you've, you've, you've got full power. This system right now, that battery was charged directly off biogas. My colleague here, he's got 
computer, he's online, you know, the system does work and it's extremely efficient. Now what goes in comes out. Unlike conventional systems, what goes in comes out partially digested, so cannot be used as a fertilizer. This system is 100% digested and comes out and is extremely potent fertilizer and can go straight into your shamba with no problems at all. We target children because we believe that opening children's eyes to this kind of technology, by default, they will not use charcoal again in the future, you know, when they, when they move into homes of their own. They won't want to go back to that dirty fuel uh, methodology. So thank you very much.